Hey folks, I'm Nick Hawks with Gristle King, walking you through how to measure your power draws for your off-grid helium hotspot. So let's get started. I got a couple pieces of equipment here. I got this little DC power supply right now. I got it set to 12 volts. We'll walk you through how to change that. I've got a couple of different things that you can use this little USB measuring tool. Um, those are a lot cheaper. Those are a little bit easier, not quite as accurate, but for what you're doing, you probably can get away with that. I've just got the power supply hanging out because I like to measure power draws. So that's what, um, that's what we're gonna use today. So we're gonna measure three different things. Number one, we're gonna measure the hotspot. Number two, we're gonna measure the charge controller. And number three, we're gonna measure the cell modem. Those are the three things I'm gonna plug in on this particular hotspot that I want to know the power draws for. Uh, don't be confused when you see my hotspot, which is actually, it's a DIY, so it's a little Pi Zero and a 2287 that I built. It's not something that you can get right now, but as long as you understand that, as long as you measure your hotspot, you're fine, then it doesn't matter if your numbers are my numbers, I'm building this for my specific use case. So, with that said, um, I've got everything kind of laid out right here, and the first thing we'll measure is my hotspot. We get watts by multiplying volts times amp. So five times 0 0.27, 0 0.25, whatever that ends up being. Now I'm off the top of my head, we'll call that 1.25, something like that, five times 25. Uh, a little bit more, maybe 1.3, 1.4, is what we'll do is we'll just kind of watch this for a while. Because as any of these devices turn on, they usually go through some kind of boot up sequence, usually a little bit higher power draw. And then after a couple minutes, it'll settle out and we'll have the measurement that we want to have. So just so you guys see that, in, in fact, it might be uh, useful to zoom in on that sucker. Get this guy uh, going. So now we're down at, for our little uh, Pi Zero, which is my, my hotspot in the 2287, we're sitting at five times um, 0 0.24, 0 0.25. So we'll call that 1.25-ish. And I'll probably get a little bit more accurate um, watts is what it's pulling. Okay, so now that we've been measuring the Pi, it's sitting at five volts and just under 0.2 amps. It's been on for a couple minutes now. So that's telling me that I can probably, if I'm gonna, especially if I'm gonna squeak it and go as small as I can, which is what I'm trying to do, is that this thing is pulling right around one watt. All right, five times 0 0.192, 0 0.196. As long as it's not 0.2, I'm fine. A watt is totally fine. So I'm just gonna write down pi zero pulling one watt. Cool, so that's that, done. And so the next device that I've got, this is our RUT 240. This is our cell modem. You can see there's three separate um, antennas on here. There's two for the cell signal. So one called a main antenna, one called a diversity antenna in case the main goes down. And then there's a Wi-Fi antenna. I'm gonna leave the Wi-Fi on here for now, but I've actually turned the Wi-Fi off on this. So it's not broadcasting because you don't need Wi-Fi for your hotspot because there is a direct connection right here for this guy to plug in. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we are going to connect our modem and see what it does just by itself without asking it to do any work. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna change my wattage back to 12 volts. There's a negative, there's our positive, and let's see what the cell modem pulls. Now, typically these modems don't pull a bunch if they're not doing anything, right? And right now, this thing isn't doing anything, it's just connecting to the internet. So I'm gonna let it sit and do that for a while. While it does that, I'm gonna grab another cable and I'll hook the Pi up, my little hotspot, to a power cable, and I'll plug the Pi in so we can see what the RUT240 is doing um, as it's actually processing the data from the hotspot. So before I get the Pi plugged in, before I get my little um, hotspot, which is gonna be the equivalent of a, a packet forwarder, plugged in, I'm just kind of watching this thing and seeing, okay, if it's not being asked to do anything, and after it's gone through its boot up sequence, it's sitting right at 12, times 0.13, so we know 12 times 12 is 144, so we're looking at 0.144, like, ah, 0.145, let's call it, um, oh, look at that, it's it's really sinking down now, so 12 times 0.08 is 96, so we're looking at this is maybe, let's be conservative, we'll call it 1.2, 1 1.3, uh, yeah, 1.2, 1.3, so we'll call it one point two and that is just our modem. Let's see what happens when we plug in the hotspot 
to the modem and actually make the modem start doing some work. So right now it's sitting at um, 12 times 0 0.08, 0 0.12, whatever it is, one point something watts. Um, let's let's plug this guy in, which is my uh, equivalent for a, a hotspot. It's going to be like a packet forwarder and see how that thing changes. Now we've got the hotspot starting to fire up. So we'll see how that thing does. And it's connected into the modem and the modem is starting to have to do some, some work. So now we're just gonna watch because the hotspot will take a little bit of while to spin up and go through its own booting process and then start requesting information and forwarding packets, which is what a packet forwarder does and receiving them and doing all that stuff. And we'll see if that creates any draw at all or extra draw on the cell modem. Now we kind of look and see, okay, is this changing? Is what we had before changing a little bit? And it doesn't seem to be changing much. It's 12 volts, that's constant voltage. This guy's jumping around a little bit. Now it's going up 12 uh, times 0.12, so uh, 1.44 watts, maybe as low as 0.9. But I think the number we had before of 1.2 watts is probably pretty reasonable. Now, I do want to point out that um, I'm going as close to the edge as I can go here. Right, is I'm basically taking one of the high points that this thing kisses and I'm using that as my number. I'm not waiting for this to go to the very highest point and using that. I'm looking at this number as it jumps around. I'm doing some fast math in my head and I'm saying, okay, this is probably between 0.96 or right around a watt, maybe a little bit higher as this guy goes up to 0.12, which is what we just saw. Maybe it's 1.44 watts. So I'm going to call that in general 1.2 watts that is super rough super loose math no engineer will really appreciate that but that's fine with me that's good enough for what i'm doing up next is our charge controller this thing should draw the least out of anything um, it's not doing very much just telling the energy where to go it's not actually producing stuff or doing any huge work it's just shunting the energy and sending it different places so when we plug this guy in we're going to see that um, it doesn't do anything super crazy. One cool thing on these Victrons, uh, the MPPT7515, is that you can buy a little Bluetooth dongle, and that dongle will push out to a screen what you are um, supposed to be seeing. And so I'll grab my little iPad, I'll switch over to um, what it shows, and you can see kind of what's going on. In fact, I'll get that sucker set up right now. So here's my iPad. We'll put this on Victron Connect, and... We'll see as it goes through and fires up um, what that guy pulls. We can see that it immediately, the iPad immediately sees this. And the only cool thing about this Bluetooth dongle stuff is that you can just look and see what's going on inside this Victron and see what it's pulling. So it becomes more important once we put everything together, we get everything in our enclosure, we get the battery, all that stuff going, is we can let this thing run for a day or so and come back and look at the iPad. You can see right now it's pulling zero watts. It's not hooked up to... Um, really anything. Um, it says it's getting 11.96 volts. This says it's feeding it uh, 12 volts. So somewhere between there, there's 0 0.04 volts that are being lost. And then basically nothing's happening because this isn't processing anything. It's not hooked to a battery. It's not hooked to solar panels, not hooked to a load, nothing. But if we let this thing run over time, we let it run for 24 or 48 or 96 hours because we want to do a longer test and see what's actually pulling over time. You can come back to the Bluetooth version of this and just Make sure that uh, you're seeing what you what you want to see. And it gives you a, a long-term version of the power draw, which is in opposition to what we're doing right now, which is kind of look, looking very temporarily at this guy. So 12 volts right here. You can see this thing's bouncing back and forth between 0 0.016 and 0 0.017. If we simulate kind of real world and we unplug this Bluetooth, you're going to see that this thing is going to disconnect and this thing is now going from 0 0.015 to 12, or sorry, 0 0.015 to 0 0.016 instead of 0 0.016 to 0 0.017. So 16 times 12 is, shit, I don't know, something under 200. Um, and that's what we'll put in for our charge controller. So now we've measured everything we need to measure. We know how much, how many watts the hotspot's gonna pull. We know how many watts the charge controller's gonna pull, not very many. And we know how many watts the modem is gonna pull. We add all of those up. Uh, we multiply that by 24, 24 hours in a day. And now we know how many watts these things are gonna pull a day. And we can start to say, okay, with a 12 volt battery and this many amp hours, um, it'll give us some watt hours. And then we know how big of a battery we need. And we also know that you know, depending on where we are, how long our winter storms are, how long the length of the day is where we are. Um, that's how much time we have to capture the energy we need. So that'll help us to size our solar panel. All right, 
there it is. That's how to measure all of the uh, power draws for pretty much anything you're going to use, whether you want to get deep and do the power supplier, you want to go cheap and do the USB digital tester. Uh, you got plenty of options to figure out what needs to go into your helium hotspot off-grid. That's all for today.